Okay, let's be brutally honest. Let's be... Let's just be brutally honest, right to the point where... I don't know. How, how brutally honest can I be? <laughs> Every time and I've got more light mods... You're bragging! No, not really. It's, I'm just telling the truth. More light mods than the top 50 YouTube photography channels combined. Every time I make a like an ingenious new light mod, like fiber optics or some really unique stuff, everybody's like, well, that's really cool. <sighs> you know, I've... I, of course, make countless videos on lenses and cameras and reviews, and that's wonderful. That's the stuff people get excited about. Here's a really good question, and this is something you should ask yourself, like looking in the mirror when you're brushing your teeth or scratching your crotch in the morning, you know, when you wake up and you take a leak, and you're like, you know, instead of lusting after that new... Because this is sexy stuff, you know. Th th here's the problem with every photographer, whether they're amateur, including professionals. I, I know some real hardcore professionals, and they got the same issue, too. Um, but they, they know better, ultimately. When you look at this, whether it's this camera or whatever camera. Sony, Nikon. Oh, my God. The latest lens, the latest camera. Ooh. <laughs> well, we get the hots for this sort of stuff. And when we look at lighting, like a strobe, you know... It's, uh, it's like we're looking at a garbage heap covered in raccoons. We, we just, why? Why? Why can't you get excited about lighting? Lighting is so incredibly important. I mean, if you can make a New Year's, every nobody makes New Year's resolutions anymore because nobody keeps your New Year's resolutions, is why can't you get excited about lighting? You know, and this is, this is, uh, an undeniable fact. It's hardcore and there's not a single photographer on it. I love making statements like that where it doesn't matter if someone hates me or likes me or otherwise, that it's an irrefutable cornerstone fact. It's like the Rock of Gibraltar. It's one of those things when you say it, you just go, shut up. You can't say anything against it. And this is one of those irrefutable statements. The irrefutable statement is that you can get infinitely farther with a crap lens and good lighting than you can with the most expensive epic tata lens and crap lighting you take the best lens and crap lighting <sighs> no you take a crap lens and uh, some awesome lighting oh you make you know, wonders why you know the interesting thing about a strobe or a speed light specifically a strobe the one thing also too you don't realize and basically nobody else i don't care the hell you like godox Speed lights, whatever. I'm talking about xenon flash tubes. However, you got a lot more versatility. I mean, this isn't that damn big. You know, you got a power pack. You can take this portably anywhere. An umbrella, this thing, an octobox, and a, a freaking $10 Chinese aluminum light stand. You can go anywhere with this damn thing. You know, how complicated is this? And here's something else, too, you don't get. Most all studio strobes are far less complex than a complex speed light is. There's not much back here. People get intimidated by a studio strobe, but they got no problem slapping a damn Godox or whoever the hell make it, unless it's young, new, old junk, which, you know, those speed lights crap out really bad. This is a lot more complicated and a lot more buttons and, uh, you know, uh, button sniffing junk on it than this does. But you could do a thousand things more with this than you can with this. Not simply, just simply due to power. Mods, octoboxes, softboxes, beauty dishes. Holy crap! This is, you know, I, I know most of you don't buy um, expensive uh, Canon and Nikon speed lights anymore, which average about 500 bucks. That's fine. It's like, I, you know, you want to buy some cheap Chinese junk? Fine. Now, actually, I like the Godox units, and everybody seems to like the Godox speed lights, and I've used this a bunch in testing. It's all well and fine. Young Nuo stuff is junk. So much more versatile. So much more powerful. Now, I, I know you can't stick this on your... Actually, I saw one guy that took a studio strobe and he stuck it on his hot shoe. <laughs> that was a really stupid idea. I, you easily break your camera. I know you can't stick this on your hot shoe. But God's sakes, you know, as a Christmas gift or like as a, you know, as a thought. I don't care what the hell you... Photox, I don't care what the hell you buy. This not a speed light. Speed light just does not have the versatility. I'm going to get a speed light. You know, it's good enough for me. Fine. Just please realize that you have so much more potential. Everything is about saturation, too. You want to talk about micro contrast? You know what is really, really critical when it comes to uh, um, photography? Saturation. You're able to drop an enormous amount of light on your sensor 
in any time period that you choose. When you have control over lighting, then you have control over everything in photography. Nobody gets excited about this stuff. 95% of all studio strobes are far less complicated than a speed light. Point one. Point two, you have not only an enormous amount more power with a uh, studio strobe, you have an enormous amount more potential, like I said, octoboxes, softboxes, beauty dishes, oh my god, umbrellas. You know how much cheap Chinese umbrellas cost? Like 10 bucks a pop or less on eBay. Freaking $20. If you want to get a junk light stand, they're good enough. 15 bucks on eBay. You could rock your photographic world with a $400. I don't care if it's buff. However, this is the best studio strobe in the world. I know in some places you say you can't get them over in Europe. You technically can. But if that's the case, fine. You know, get whatever you want. You have so much more potential with a studio strobe than you do with anything else. It's just so much more potential. Why doesn't anybody get excited? No, I, I basically never get questions about studio strobes. Why? They're not just for studio. You know, your power pack. $150 for a power pack. I got a, I got a few of them over there. You just hang them off a light stand. You plug this into your power pack. And you turn on your power pack. You can sit there and shoot all day on a power pack. They don't weigh that much. They hang around your shoulder like a freaking purse. I know one guy, and I've actually I've made a bod like that too, where you actually stick this on a monopod, stick the power pack around your shoulder like a purse, sit there hanging over here, octobox, softbox. Um, however, a light stand is a much better idea. Some places don't allow you to set up tripods and light stands. And uh, some countries are like Paris, I believe. My buddy in Paris told me that you can't set up a tripod without a permit. So you could actually have an assistant or yourself actually sit one of these on a monopod and just travel around and uh, use a, uh, a studio strobe on a, a monopod. Um, a little bit cumbersome, though. You have to have one-handed shooting and holding the this, this strobe with the other hand. Nobody gets it. By the way, I've been testing out this new device from Paul C. Buff. No, this is not a Paul C. Buff infomercial. I see you buy whatever studio strobe you want. The CyberSense, oh my god. Touch sliders for adjusting power and uh, modeling lamp. Oh lord. And of course, I stuck up neck lanyard on it. So, all I have to do is drop my uh, trigger on my camera, my receiver, and uh, my strobe. I have a uh, Control over the unit here, hanging off my neck, over there. When I adjust the power, just drop it, raise it, however many stops I want. Oh my God! By the way, LED lighting sucks. The only good LED lighting is super, super, super expensive um, video lighting. It costs a fortune, and it still doesn't have any kind of a. Please, God, don't ask me about LED lighting. LED lighting sucks. It has issues with color consistency. It's not powerful enough. The standard for countless decades now, and still the standard, is this neat little thing. Repeat after me two words, xenon tube. Can you say these two words after me? Xenon tube. This is actually the LED right here for the modeling lamp. It's actually a powerful LED, but that's not what illumines the face. You could actually use this for video. However, it's uh, noisy because the fan kicks on to uh, keep it cooled down since the LED puts out a lot of power on this unit. But... This is the little puppy that does all the work right here. Repeat after me two words. Xenon tube. The most important thing in photography, even more important than the lens on your camera. More important to the saturation, lighting, and composition that you imagine and want to create is this two little word thing right here made out of glass and some metal contacts is a xenon tube. Xenon flash tube. Mm-hmm. Nobody gets excited about lighting. This video is kind of a rant, I guess. Like, nobody talks about studio strobes. Why not? Oh, they're intimidating. How the hell is this intimidating? Everybody's got a freaking speed light. What do I got to repeat myself? Everybody's got a speed light. This is ten times more complicated than this. You see the back of this? You know, menus. Well, this is not that complicated. I mean, neither one of them are complicated to me, but this is a lot more complicated than this is. Even the owner's manual is a lot bigger. And this is actually one of the simple ones. When you talk about a Nikon speed light, like an SP910 or 9000, I mean 5000. The amount of power and saturation you could drop on your shot, and this is actually only 160 watt second digit B. I actually rec recommend the DB800. It's only slightly more money. 
than this. And my main units are larger than this, but this is perfect for a portability for packing to a job. You could get 90% if you're talking about single or two or three people, unless it's large groups or you know, you're shooting a car for a product shot. You can get away 95% of photography with a reflector and a 300-watt uh, second studio strobe. All you need is a freaking umbrella and a power, uh, power pack to be portable. If you can get somewhere within, you know, spitting distance of a wall outlet, then this is the reason why, too, you should have like a 50-foot extension cord. Um, however, that weighs more. The 50-foot extension cord weighs more and is more cumbersome than actually the lithium power pack. If you want something for Christmas, and I'm not pushing anything here, whether it's Pulsy Buff or anything else, instead of buying that damn lens, and listen, everybody that's taken my advice on this, I, I crap you not, listen closely, I crap you not, everybody that's taken my advice on this, I'll listen to you, you know, instead of buying that lens, I bought a studio strobe, you know, I fumbled around with it for like a half a day, and then I nailed it, and now I'm shooting pictures of everybody and their brother, I'm getting money, uh, money pouring in, people love the way, my, you know, I bought an Octobox, and then I upgraded and I got a beauty dish, if you want to get into photography, it's not about a, pap, uh, a, 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 a briefcase full of, it's not a briefcase, but a backpack full of speed lights, which is fine. It's about having at least one damn studio strobe, a reflector, an octobox, a softbox, an umbrella, a couple cheap light stands to start out with. If you want to hit it and hit it hard, you could do more with that than you can with any other photographic tool. I don't care if it's a super expensive camera, a super fast camera, or the most expensive lens money can buy. The thing that will drop more happiness on your shot and more money in your wallet, if that's what you want to do, is a frigging studio strobe. And it shouldn't be called a studio, just call it a strobe. It doesn't mean it has to be used in the studio. These are really small and lightweight, by the way. I also got the best customer service in the world. No, I'm not a fanboy for... Well, I am a fanboy for Buff. The reason I'm a fanboy for Buff is because there's really two options out there. There's the insanely expensive, obnoxiously rude company. Um, the, uh... Oh, crap. Um, oh, Lord, what's the name of the company? We used them back in photography school. I had a brain fart. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what I'm talking about. Um, sometimes I think of about a thousand things at once and a brain fart. Someone's going to type it below. Anyway, the obnoxiously expensive studio strobe um, and Pulsy Buff. Not Photox, not Godox. Everybody keeps talking about the AD200. You use whatever you want. If you're over out of seas and it's like you want a cheap AD200, fine. I don't care what you use as long as you're dropping it with a xenon tube. The ulti ultimately, I think it's important is this little thing called xenon tube. If it's got that on it and it's honking and it's sucking some power, then you're doing okay. But uh, this is my recommendations. Um, you know, I've mentioned that company probably 10 billion times. You ever have one of those things where, like, you've, you've mentioned something a thousand times and you forget the name of a company or something? There's so many names going around in my head up there. That's. Uh, I want to actually have a, a a an inappropriate pause. While I rattle my brain and maybe slap myself really hard to uh, remember the name of the company of the obnoxiously expensive studio strobe. Just a, a, a uh, unpleasant pause. That company would be, um, I haven't used them in like 15 years. Um, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Don't you? It's like, you're getting old. No, not really. I'm just sleep deprived. Anyway, just consider getting a strobe for Christmas or as your New Year's resolution. You could do so much more with it than that freaking lens that you want. You know? You just can. It's like, would you rather have some serious lighting? By the way, you should be listening to all the pros, too. Actually, there's a lot of pros that I see that don't even... Man, I've seen... Ooh. It's like, well, that's a nice shot. It could have used some lighting. This is the one thing that I repeat to myself all the time. It's like, my God, that's a beautiful shot, but it could use some lighting. Why is, I mean, people that are like really famous on Instagram and Flickr, it's like, wow, she's drop dead gorgeous. That shot's hot. Where's the lighting at? It's like, well, that's just, you know, 
I want to see that. I'm a natural light shooter. No. That's, you know, that's fine for landscape photography and for sunrise and sunset photography. If you're not doing landscape photography, sunrise, sunset photography, or architectural photography where you can't light an entire building, don't tell me about natural light photography. Screw that crap. <laughs> oh, natural light. Light is light is light. Really, there's no such thing as natural light photography? I'm just using the ambient light. So like, instead of saying natural light, because there's no such thing as artificial light. Well, sure it is. You know, this is artificial. No, light is light is light is light. Um, just say ambient lighting. By saying ambient lighting, it just means you're a slave to the light, like you got to hunt it, you know? The smart hunters, like, don't go out and stalk the prey. They, like, stick out uh, stuff to draw the prey in. You know, like duck decoys. You know, the smart hunt. I'm not advocating hunting. The smart hunters will throw out a bunch of duck decoys or uh, goose decoys. And, you know, then they'll come in, you know. They'll draw their prey in. There's uh, two, smart, two ways to hunt, the stupid way and the smart way. Maybe we'll talk about a uh, natural light photographer. They remind me of like somebody wearing a loincloth, like hunting down their prey, and, like walking 50 miles with a bow and arrow. It's like, isn't that cool? Not really. I prefer, it, I'm not a hunter, okay, I don't jump on my back. I prefer to like, you know, stick out the duck decoys and like bring it into you. You just sit there on your fat ass watching TV and eating Cheetos. Bring the prey into you. That's, that, that would be analogous to what the hell this is. I'm a natural light photographer. Every time I hear that, I go, ha, 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 oh, God, natural light. Oh, God, you're so funny. Natural light photographer. Yeah, whatever. Light is light. It's whatever makes the shot that you want, you know. Why can't I think of the name of that studio strobe? So, um, yeah, obnoxiously expensive, horrible customer service. Obnoxious. What is the name of that company? Someone's going to type it below. Like, several people are going to type it below. And as soon as I click end on this video, I'm going to, oh, damn, that's what it is. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like these videos, click the link below. Tell me, jump off a cliff, whatever makes you happy. Happy holidays. All that crap. Bye.